Hi, my name is Bob and I'm renovating this 1973 Egg Harbor Sport Fish Boat. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Renovation Sport Fish. As you can see, I'm not in my shop as usual. I'm up here at beautiful Lake Winnipesaukee in New Hampshire. Uh, enjoying a bit of a holiday week with uh, some friends for 4th of July. Uh, this is episode 9. Uh, we cover uh, the projects at the end of the year of 2013. That would be uh, things I did in the month of October, November, and December. So here's the uh, first project. Hope you enjoy it. Now the first piece I'm going to talk about here is this inner uh, wood piece. I was located behind and sort of above the window frame. Uh, the window frame actually attaches to it. Uh, from the factory, this was just a piece of mahogany plywood, uh, and it wasn't really attached to the center uh, window post or the side window posts. Uh, I wanted to attach it to both of those pieces just to make it a little more structural. So I cut a rabbit on the center post and attached it there. And on the side post, I used a couple screws. Now I also attached it through the flybridge deck plywood down through the top of it um, with some small screws just to hold it and some thickened epoxy. The toughest part was trying to cut the camber into the top of this piece uh, to match the flybridge deck plywood. Another thing I had to do was it was a piece of um, plywood attached on the inside of this piece uh, and it was only there to attach the uh, headliner to. The headliner was a vinyl headliner stapled uh, to this piece and I wasn't going to use a headliner, I'm not reinstalling a headliner here, uh, so I don't really need this piece so I didn't install it. But that left a couple of gaps at the end at the side posts um, which I just filled with a piece of uh, solid mahogany. Not the prettiest little filling piece I would say but it does the function and you won't even see it in the end, it's going to be covered. Well, the next piece I wanted to install were these upper side window uh, pieces. Um, it was the outer piece of wood, ran the entire length of the top of the side windows. Uh, I had to replace the entire piece. Uh, the original pieces were plywood uh, and they were in really rough shape and to change some of the other pieces out I had to take this whole piece out anyways. Now this piece has a bit of a curve to it if you looked from the top. Uh, so it was a little bit tricky to get in. Uh, the original piece, like I said, was plywood, and it wasn't attached to the upper side window uh, frame part. Uh, it was it was some bondo type filler material in there, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to attach these two pieces solidly, so I used my little biscuit um, and thickened epoxy method. Um, came came a little bit tricky, just because of that curvature and trying to bend the piece and get all these uh, biscuits to line up was a real pair, especially when I was doing it myself. Uh, I managed to do it. Uh, the only problem I really had with it, um, besides lining them up, like I said, was I had just set all of the screws in along it, um, just so it would be easier for me to just start screwing in when I got it all set down onto the, uh, the other piece with the biscuits. But as I was banging it down and tapping it down, all the screws were falling out all over the place and I ended up just having to sc scramble around and get screws and this kind of thing. So first piece I did that way, second piece I, I didn't put the screws in until after. I had to deal with a little 
more epoxy cleanup coming through those screw holes. But that was about it. That brings us to the interior uh, side window frames. Now these frames consisted of uh, four pieces of wood. I call one the header, one the sill, and then two side pieces. Now the side pieces are at about a 45 degree angle to the, uh, the header and the sill piece. And um, I had to replace those two pieces in their entirety. The sill piece itself, I only replaced about eight to 12 inches on either end of it. That was rotted out just due to uh, poor drainage in the window um, channel. And the header, I basically just um, removed it and reset it. Another piece I had to install at the uh, windshield poner posts were uh, just a, one little filler piece that ran along uh, the whole inside uh, face of these uh, posts. Basically what this does is just double the thickness of the uh, corner post where the windshield frame is attached. Uh, and that's the only function I could think that these really uh, perform. So these pieces were a little tricky. There was a few angles I had to cut, but just like all the other pieces, you know, you just take your time and keep fitting and cutting and trimming and fitting and uh, eventually they all fit in. talk about the installation of the windshield frames. Now if you've seen my previous episodes you would have seen me uh, fabricate these uh, windshield frames. Uh, if you haven't seen it you might want to go back and check that out. Um, the windshield frames were uh, attached all around the perimeter with screws and thickened epoxy. Uh, at the top they were screwed into the um, pieces I just previously installed, the inner wood piece. At the sides they were attached to the uh, corner posts uh, in the middle the center post and at the bottom they were screwed right through the plywood decking and into the uh, deck beams. Um, all the screws 
were uh, plugged with wood plugs after I um, had installed it and uh, except for the bottom. At the bottom I couldn't sink the screws deep enough to actually put a wood plug in uh, so for those I just um, used thickened epoxy to fill in the screw holes. Once I installed the uh, windshield frames, then I moved on to the um, pieces above the windshield frames, which were the outer uh, windshield frame pieces, I guess I'll call them here. Uh, these were originally made out of uh, plywood from the factory. Um, I wanted to use um, solid mahogany as I usually do, uh, and so that's what I did. Now I used uh, plenty of screws to attach these uh, to the inner wood piece, uh, but I also attached uh, this piece to the uh, upper windshield frame with um, some biscuits and epoxy using my method I talked about before. Uh, the factory didn't have these two pieces attached together. They just had that uh, bondo type material to seal the seam in between them. Uh, but I didn't want that. Just like on the side windows, I wanted to um, connect these two pieces together and make this one uh, nice solid uh, wood structure. So once this piece was in, I had to plane down the top of it and kind of contour it with a long board. But um, I'll show that in a future episode. So I had to do a little fairing and filling at the uh, the upper side window piece and the uh, side window frame. Uh, it wasn't the best, uh, cleanest seam I ever put together. Uh, there was some, some gouging I did when I was removing pieces on the uh, upper side window frame. And so, you know, it was just areas I had to fill in, uh, fill in sand. Uh, so I'm pretty familiar with uh, body work on cars because I've done quite a bit of that here and there as a hobby. Um, but I wasn't really familiar with the material I had chosen to use uh, for the boat. Uh, I chose to use the West Systems fairing filler uh, material mixed with uh, their epoxy. But, you know, I found it a bit tedious to mix up. I did, you know, you had to mix the two epoxy uh, the hardener and uh, the, uh, the resin together first, then mix in this filler powder. Uh, material until you got the consistency you wanted. Now I, I had trouble getting it consistently uh, at the same thickness every time I mixed it. Either it was droopy or it was too dry. I mean it was just me maybe, I don't know, but I wasn't really a big fan of using it. Uh, but I did use it for this um, application so that's what you're going to see spewed all over these pieces of wood before I sanded them. Uh, since then I've discovered uh, Total Boat's two-part um, oxy uh, fairing compound um, and I really like that. That's more consistent uh, with the body filler that I'm used to. Mixes up easy, you know, just two parts and uh, yeah, so I've used that now. But anyways, here's what I did then.
So now I'm going to uh, show the installation of the main bulkhead lower um, pieces. These are three quarter inch uh, dug fir uh, marine grade plywood. I pre fiberglass them with the material called Zinyl. Um, it's a fiberglass, it's not really a structural fiberglass, it's more of an abrasion resistance fiberglass. Uh, so I put a couple of layers of that on before I uh, put these in on the uh, engine compartment side. You'll also notice that there's a couple of hatch openings I made. These were not there from the factory. I just added them because uh, it was a little difficult to get to the front of the engine, um, pulleys and things like that. So I thought these would be a good way to uh, access that area. Not sure I love uh, the access panels I bought, about these cheap plastic ones, but I'll use them for now and maybe uh, put something else in there later on. So I joined these three pieces together on the sides with a lap joint. I just made three pieces because it was uh, easier to install that way. And uh, I wasn't too concerned about the lap joint because uh, the inside surface on the galley area was going to be a quarter inch piece of mahogany plywood. And on the uh, head area, it was all going to be fiberglassed over because I was going to use this wall as the, uh, the shower stall wall. Uh, in the beginning of the clip, I, um, I show some minor modifications I did to a like a 2 by 4 um, piece that uh, these bulkheads rest on. Uh, from the factory, they, this 2 uh, by piece kind of extended really close to the engine pulleys. And I wanted a little more space in there, so I just kind of uh, cut it and rounded it off and um, added a couple layers of fiberglass on it just to clean it up. So that's what you're going to see there. want to talk about and show actually here is a uh, replacement of a uh, piece of uh, plywood on the flybridge deck. Uh, this was um, 3 8 inch plywood. I don't know if it's marine grade or not. I think it's just exterior plywood they use. Um, but I had to replace a section right where the ladder came up. About a one foot by three foot section. I had rotted away. It also extended a little bit into one of the ceiling uh, beams. So I had to fabricate a little Dutchman uh, to fill in that area. So you'll see that, you'll see the plywood installation and I also put a couple pieces of mahogany blocking, solid mahogany about an inch thick blocking there. Just so I'd have something to attach the uh, guardrail uh, bases to uh, in the future. Well, that's going to wrap up this episode. It's going to wrap up the 2013 projects. And unfortunately, 
uh, it's going to wrap up my vacation here at Lake Winnipesaukee. So until next time, have a good one and we'll see you soon right here on Renovation Sportfish.